Hey everyone, welcome to D&D Plus 3, I think is what we're calling this. So, uh, I'm, I'm Eric, I'm DMing this whole thing. Uh, with me today are three of the four players. We have... Whoever wants to introduce themselves first. No one goes first. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all right. Silence is... Right. Uh, see here, I'm Greg Chambers, I'm, we'll, I'll be playing um, Balgulf the Drunkard. A dwarven rogue. Okay. I'm so. Daniel Down. I'll be playing Pripyat von Hoffenstachen, the war cleric. And I'm Sam Lucidi, and I'll be playing Kuruvar the Brazen, a worn out old conjurer who's really just not really very much of a wizard at all. Alright, and for the first adventure, these guys will be doing the Idols of the Rat King. The adventure is set just outside of uh, the history, or, the, yes, the history of Silverton, the town of Silverton. Um, a little bit of background, the town is, uh, is a small village located about two weeks north of uh, the city of Soulgrave, and three weeks to the south of the capital city of this territory of Archbridge. It's a mining town that grew up or grew from the hard work of one merchant family, the Gnu family. Uh, Jasper Gnu, prospector and patriarch of the uh, the family, discovered silver during a prospecting tour about a hundred years ago. He immediately spent his entire life savings on funding a small mining operation and opening the silver or opening the silver mine on a rich vein of ore. Uh, miners and the poor, looking for work, flocked to the Gnu silver mine, creating a small boom town. It's about a half day's travel to the uh, the mine from there, or from from the town. Uh, within a few months, the mine shaft broke through to a large underground cavern uh, that was littered with bones and huge nuggets of silver ore. The miners found this to be strange, and the priests were brought in from both Soulgrave and Archbridge to cleanse the area of evil spirits. All the while, Jasper grew very rich and powerful from the silver that was transported to the miners' guild in Archbridge. But two years after the mine opened, Silverton, as the boom town was called, began to erect permanent structures for the miners. The silver ore was plentiful, and other mines began to open to the west of the town under the banner of the Miners Guild of Archbridge. And this is when disaster struck. Two years and six months to the day from when Jasper first found the silver vein, miners broke into a deep pocket under the earth. The pocket contained a hideously evil spirit that killed more than 20 miners before it was finally forced back into its lair by the priests and wizards who were called in to cast mighty spells and lock the evil away. The miners turned to Jasper Gnu, now with wife and child, blaming him for the catast or catastrophic event. He was lynched and hung from a hastily made gallow in the center of Silverton. His wife and child were run out of town and cursed. May no child of Jasper Gnu's seed be able to touch the horrid silver that has brought such evil to this town. The Gnu family home was burned to the ground, and the site was sown with thorny vines so that none would ever be able to build on the spot again. And that's about the rough history of the town. So you guys, having met up at some point in the past and traveling together, have made your way to the town of Silverton. Um, because there is talk of uh, raids by goblins and uh, were-rats going on to so the silver cans that come out of and into Silverton. Um, this seems like a, as good of a place as any to start uh, your heroic adventuring career. Um, you've been able to draw up some sort of a contract uh, with the people of the town. Um, <clears throat> if you can eliminate the threat, you'll get 200 gold pieces between a lot of you. Um, and in addition to that, there's, a uh, a few other minor rewards for destroying it. Uh, you get the spoils as long as you return all of the silver to the rightful owners, and the, even those owners might pay you some amount of money for retrieving the cargo. So, with that in mind, do you have anything you would like to do in the town before you head out? Drink. All right. Anyone else? Did he say drink? Yes, he I did. I said drink. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> sounds perfectly fine. <laughs> the best idea. <laughs> well, 
It is about midday, so if you were to leave now, you would make it by nightfall, and that might not be the best idea. So, waiting out the day might be a good idea. Drinking out the day might be a good idea. Yeah, that, that too. Now, tomorrow... Make, make me learn a thing or two. <laughs> Uh, tavern. We'll have a good time. Tomorrow will be the first day of a new month. So, other so than... Drink till morning adventure with a hangover. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Sounds you like a plan. Hangovers, boy? <laughs> you know, technically it is a, like a poisoning effect. Dwarfs would be somewhat resistant to a hangover. <laughs> but... With your, your night of uh, booze and fun settled, you can set out at the uh, first light or whenever you can rouse yourselves. I'll set out, like, the minute after this hangover. <laughs> Second the hangover's done. Is there, a t- is there an actual time scale for how long they last? Um, no, I don't think there is. I don't think D&D ever covers that, except for in one class, and I don't feel like looking up that class right now. We'll just assume two hours. Nah. It's really until you can get yourself rehydrated. But, with that, the adventure can begin. And I will, there will be a new map and map tools, and I'll switch everything over. There's a little globe in the top right corner that says select map. And from there, we can start everything. So, when you guys are ready to go, I'll read the little pe- blurb that you guys get. So, it's morning now, after a night of drinking? Yep. All right. Uh, like a morning mimosa. <laughs> ah, good choice. <laughs> Get all of the stuff you need, and all of those vitamins and all of that alcohol. <laughs> I, I can't do a good adventure sober, now can I? Your character is slowly becoming more and more like the dwarf from uh, the D&D movie. Which one? Uh, I think it was the first one. The, the random dwarf they happened to find somewhere in the trash heap. <laughs> And if you haven't watched that, go ahead and watch that movie drunk. If you're of legal drinking age. Otherwise, watch the movie and be in despair. It's a pretty bad movie. Well, Kuruvar begins going through his things, making sure he's got everything together for the the day's adventuring. He uh, opens up a small cage that he's carrying with him and uh, kind of loads his, his raven familiar into it. With uh, some some uh, you know a set of little baby keys or something like that for the raven to play with, and uh, once he's satisfied that he's got all his scrolls and his book bag and stuff together, he uh, he heads downstairs. Okay. Well, I down my 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 morning on both sides. Follow uh, Sam's character. Okay. I decided to take the rear and um, brandish my warhammer. Okay. Well, the trip to the mine takes about half a day, and it is almost completely uneventful. Uh, you do follow, find a path through the dense underbrush and tangled trees to uh, to get to the mouth of the or the uh, the mouth of the mine. Uh, before you are the collapsed remnants of the tunnel you have been following. Small footprints can be seen entering the wreckage as if it weren't there. There must be a secret door. And and I should note, can text is uh very very forgiving. But you guys are roughly in this area on the map, and this black line right here is to indicate that uh. I derped something up when rendering this map. 
There is a door, or there is supposed to be a wall there. There is not. Ah, okay. I'm on the, uh, I'm on the right map now. All right. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I'm having technical issues here. Like, what map? I'm seeing blue here instead of a map. Uh, on the in the top right, there's a globe with select map next to it. Click on that and go to Silvermine Floor One. Oh, the stupid Skype thing. We oh, call yeah, you can close right. that. <laughs> that that's the most useless feature because it just gets in your way. And I have never bothered to disable it, so it always does that when I'm not hosting the call. Alright, so what's that line you're talking about that got messed up? Oh, um... There is a black line... Any of these oh, black thing. lines you see, uh, there's supposed to be a wall there, but isn't gotcha. because of how I rendered the map. Lovely. Yep. So, you guys have reached the end of the tunnel, huh? What do you want to do? Well, my first question actually is how I scroll along the map to get uh, to the bottom of it. If you right-click and move your mouse, it will oh, move the actual gotcha. map. Gotcha. And oh, that's not going to use... be annoying at all because I have a I don't have a mouse on me. I'm using a touchpad. Yeah, it is kind of annoying. All right, now just to find us. Uh, I can actually I can do that for you guys. I can center all of you on your tokens. Ah, oh, that's lovely. So, you are in the hallway. Um, you can assemble yourself in whatever marching order you please. And let me know when you guys are ready to start. What's the light level here? Um, it is low light. There does appear to be... Or at the moment, there's some light filtering in from the entrance of the tunnel. Right. Um, otherwise, it appears that there might be some sconces at, for, uh, for torches... Uh, goblins, while they have dark vision, they generally prefer to have, you know... Low, low light? Yeah, they low light or real light, just so they can actually see uh, full color, in case that's needed. Right. Um, I guess I'll go first, just so that way I have, like, my sense stuff enabled. Yep. Alright, well, you can go ahead and roll me a search check. Um... Let me grab my D twenty then. Uh, Map tools has a built-in rolling feature, and I will show you oh. how. Is it I... slash roll something? No, it's it's square bra It's something like that. I just oh, sent it in Skype chat. All right, so it's. Yep. D twenty plus. Blah, blah, blah. Check. Alright. Okay. That roll is more than sufficient to find the secret door that is uh, conveniently where my rendering error happens to be. (laughs) And it is now... Let me erase something. Oops. That made it worse. There is a secret door here. Uh, It appears to be a hatch in the wall. Um... <clears throat> it does appear to be stuck, but it appears to be made out of uh, wood, and it also appears to be locked. But you could either try and break the door down or open the lock. I've just noticed that my character is probably a dwarf. <laughs> yes, probably. The tokens aren't always accurate. All right. <laughs> Maybe more elven than appears. <laughs> now so with one hundred. Should I attempt? So guys, should I attempt a sneaky lockpick, or should we just bash it on in and shock whoever whoever is on the outside? Well, you're a sneak about. How about you check for any traps first? Um, so that's bar search. Uh, it is... Well, you can use either, but search is probably the better of the two. Alright. Just a quick note, this my search bonus might be subject to change later, just because I haven't allocated all my skill points yet. So, I'm just yep. doing the basic for now. Oh! <laughs> well, 
You haven't found anything. I mean, the fact that the door is still here and actually stuck in place is a miracle. You, you wouldn't <laughs> think, you know, it'd be able to do that. But otherwise, there doesn't appear to be any traps. Yeah, I, I think it's perfectly clear traps, guys. Good. Kruvar says, well then, go ahead and open it. And uh, as after he says that, he uh, kind of moves his hands uh, in a very dramatic way and then kind of points his fingertips at the end of his staff and casts light. Uh, which will last for the next ten minutes. Okay. All right, Gandalf. All right, I open. I try to pick the lock. All right. And I don't do a very good job. No, it it appears to be stuck. Um, you could always take twenty. I mean, it will take two full minutes to do this, but you can take twenty. Can I take ten? Um, I will tell you with your bonus, ten will not get it. Is bashing down the door still an option? It's always no, it's an, totally option. an option. It's always an option. It's like, it's still stuck. Curse it. Clearly, I'm a bit rusty on the tools, or I'm too sober. One of the two. <clears throat> oh, I only have 13 strength. I don't think I'd be able to knock it down. Well, there is always the option of attempting to break the door itself, but that is much more difficult than busting the, uh, basically busting the lock out of the mechanism. It will take much more time. Alright, then I guess I'll just keep at it then. Alright, <laughs> right, two minutes go by, and I take a 20 and spend way too much time picking yep. this goddamn lock. Uh, can you roll me a move silently? Sure. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. I swear if I get another crappy roll again. Alright. Uh, well... Uh, the door will open, uh, and as you pour into the next room, uh, the hidden entrance opens into a low, rough-walled room that is about, that is inaccurately sized in this description. Four small humanoids turn to glare with evil red eyes. Erthra screams a burly goblin as he is and his companions reach for their naked weapons lying near them. At this point, I will move all of those tokens onto this map. Just to clarify, I think our our character tokens are in totally the wrong spot. Yes, yes they are. You guys should be, like, right about here. We're floating in the, the abyss. Yep. There appear to be four goblins uh, hang, hanging about in the room. Uh, I'm going to roll a macro that will set everyone onto the initiative. If you happen to have a bonus that you don't have marked on your token... Um, you can... Oh, um, let me throw that in there. Yeah, me too. Oh, wait. Okay. It, it's in the little box, but it doesn't show up when I... Yeah, that, the character. Um, some, of the, some of the properties don't show up when you mouse over the token, so that you don't have the full character sheet popping up every time you look at your token. Um, as long as there's a, a positive or negative number in there, uh, the macro will work just fine. Dwarf 206 is a mystery man. For this shift, I just put in plus three or just three? Uh, either one works. Um, it doesn't derp up the math if you put in plus three. Which is a good thing. Alright, and let me know when everyone's ready. And the sound that's about to happen might be really loud for some people. Oh god. Uh oh. Okay. And sort to initiative. If you ha go into the Windows section and check the initiative marker, it will give you a handy dandy initiative chart. Window. Impersonate? No, initiative. Yep. Which is what you 
on the actual video is on the right of the screen. That is the initiative chart. Is there a way to pop this out of the... Uh... Yes, you can click at the, the little uh, gray bar, and it'll pop it out. You'll probably have to do some resizing, but... Yeah, here it is. That's handy. Yep. Very cool. Yep, one of the features that I like about map tools. But this with... is so much easier than just trying to imagine it all with 4th edition. Yep. Well, with that, it will be the dwarf's turn. Wait, actually get the highest initiative roll? Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? I wanna, I've got a red nerd to How do I get that initiative table to come up again? Sorry. Uh, if you click Window and click Initiative. Ah, oh, lovely. Yep. 19. Oh, and if anyone speak, does anyone speak the language Goblin? I no. let me check. I speak five languages. Nope, I speak Orcish, but not Goblin. <laughs> nope. Unless they speak either Infernal or Celestial. They do not. They only speak Goblin. Oh, I can close this Google tab on Quasi Elementals. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> That's not going to occur in this uh, module. All right. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think what you do because after me, it looks like it's all the it's mostly goblins. Two goblins, and then uh, Sam, Dan, and then the other two goblins. But I have like no real defense. Kurovar says to you, "You gather them up. I'll take care of them after that." I have the wrong HP values for a few of them. <sighs> Did you accidentally make them lower or higher? I made them higher by accident for three Oopsie. of them. All right, <clears throat> now they are updated. And yes, right. everyone will be able to see the hit point totals, mostly for my own sanity. Yeah, this is, um... Okay. That relieved a lot of the tension. Yep. Um, there might be some things you encounter where I don't put the H po or hit point total on the token, but for generic mooks and a lot of other things, I will leave it on the leave it on the token. I was scared these were super goblins. <laughs> no, they are not all statistically average goblins for hit points. Um, I will note which goblins are next on the initiative. The the one immediately after you is this one. And the one immediately following that is the one you just moved to. Okay. Just give me one second. Oh, come on. Stupid. Okay. I just need to look up one value I get right in there for some reason. SD20, you're being horrible right now. If I try to find the values for the short sword. Uh, it is a D8 for medium. Dwarves are typically medium. Oh, the laundry list of things that I happen to remember. Yes, thank you very much for that. And I'm trying to remember the penalty for the offhand. Um, do you have two weapon fighting? Nope. Uh, is your offhand light? Uh, no, it's just a second short sword. And I believe it's minus 10, minus 10, but I can tell you in a second. Um, let's see. Oh, if it's minus 10, minus 10, then, uh, screw that. I can, can I just do, like, a last second switch for a shield? Yeah. A small shield? Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind. Alright. I'll just, I'll just get to, uh, two weapon fighting later when I level up. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll just do the 1d8 roll. All right. Plus, and I don't have weapon finesse yet, so it's strength still. Which is plus one. So. D20.
Roll the hit. That right. one guy in front of me. Um, because they have not acted yet, that will that will hit. Okay, that is more than enough to knock him unconscious, yeah. which for monsters is effectively dead. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you would like to do? Um, uh, nothing I can really do right now. Okay. Welcome to level one. <laughs> yep. The goblin that is up now will attempt to throw a dagger at you. Potentially critting. <laughs> now, I will bring up that you guys do have three floating rerolls, which you can use to force monsters to reroll or reroll things you have rolled. But, uh, that is up to you guys. I will roll for confirmation. It does not confirm. So you will only take two points of damage. I think I'll just live with that. I'm going right. to roll that. And that goblin is dead, and I can remove him from the initiative count. Kirivar. How do I mark my current health? Um, just, that's one thing that you can't really effectively do in map tools. Uh, I just used calculator or notepad or something. How about I just type in 4-6, so it's 4 6 Yeah, that would work. Well, Kruvar stumbles out into the main room, wielding his little crossbow, and he says, Ah, oh, goblins, I've seen worse than that. And uh, he sort of absentmindedly fires off a shot into the corner of the room, uh, where that lone goblin's standing as his, his crow berates him. <laughs> okay. You will, however, shoot the wall. Rawr, you asshole! <laughs> <laughs> Pripyat, you are up. Okay. I just had to double check my speed. Um, with scale mail, it is 20 feet, right? Uh, yes. Uh, you can, however, charge, in which you move double your movement speed, and then get bonuses to attack and damage, but... But? Um, it, it comes at a penalty of minus 2 AC. That's okay, I can get within a range of a goblin. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Um, how do I rotate uh, this dude? Uh, don't Eric? worry about facing. Eric? Yes. Sorry to tell you this, but I just re-looked up short sword, though. You were wrong. Oh, it's D6, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Well, either, either way, you still would have killed it with that damage. damage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Pripyat oh. enters the room, sort of shoulders the weird-looking wizard out of the way, swaggers up to the goblin, and... Oh, crap. Inflict minor wounds is a touch attack, isn't it? Yep, but that's actually a really good thing, because you would be hitting AC-10. I'll go yeah. ahead and do it. Because that goblin has not yet enacted acted in the initiative. Oh, inflict, inflict minor wounds is an automatic... Well, it's just one damage, but I want to know... Um, so you said I would be hitting AC-10 if I was to try to hit it with, like, a Warhammer? Uh, it would be 15 with the Warhammer, or 10 if you're hitting Touch AC. Uh, they How do many a level 0 spells do I get a day? Four or five? It's three at first level. Oh, yeah. There's no bonus to that? Nope. No. Zeroth level spells never get bonus spells. Oh, sheesh. In that case, I'll just try to hit it with my hammer. Okay. Uh, zero. One. That's D8, right? More hammer? Um, should have it listed on your character sheet, and I can tell you. Yes, it is. 1D20 plus one? Yep, that sounds about right. Unless clerics suddenly have full BAB that I don't remember. Uh, that will sadly miss. Uh, the next two goblins are up. All right. S -s -s some, cl some clever goblinsies. Yep. Uh, the goblin in the back of the room will throw his dagger at Curiovar. Um, one point of damage. 
I'm assuming a 15 hits you. Ah! And Goblin, num Goblin Unnumbered will actually drop his dagger and draw a hand axe. Let's see, dropping's a free action. Drawing is a move action, or something you can do as part of a move action. So, he will take his standard action to attack uh, the the cleric in front of him. Ah, I see, you're trying to get the the health bar to work. Yeah, uh, I'm he... not sure how to set my HP out of my max HP. Nah. So I just set the little bar to 75%. Uh, he will miss the cleric, however, and that will be the end of initiative round one. And it will loop back up to the top for the dwarf. All right. That's why changing my love one little label. One for Rook. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just uh, actually wait. Which way is when you actually first off? How did you do that uh, thing where you are able to play on the map at someone? Uh, hold the space bar, and it will okay. show up wherever your your cursor is. All right, so this governor right here. Yep. Who's he facing? Um, he's facing him, but facing technically doesn't matter in D and D. Well, for I thought there was a if you get behind him, nope. sort of deal. Uh, it for flanking, all it cares about is where your ally is in relationship to him. So you could be flanking here, and that's and about then the only I'd be having to give up an attack opportunity. Screw yep. that! I'll just slash him. Okay. No. That will sadly miss. Uh, next up, it, I'm just going to move the corpse out of the way. <laughs> next up is this goblin. He will... As a, this dead goblin floating into the abyss. Yep. Um, it, I've never seen that before. <laughs> It's for everyone's sanity when when you put your token on another token and deselect it, you have a very hard time of getting your token back. Uh, he will draw his his hand axe and attempt to hit the cleric and miss horribly. Uh, giving way to Kyrivar. Kyrivar says, "Well, uh, I'm not such a good shot with my crossbow. I suppose he pulls out his." Uh, spell book, which is kind of at his side on a little leather strap. He starts flipping through the pages, and you know his his crow familiar goes, ah, page nine, page nine! And uh, he says, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. And he, he flips to the page for Acid Splash, and uh, points at the goblin in the far corner of the room. Okay. Rock, page nine! Rock, page nine! So that's a, that's a ranged touch attack. That will hit. You kill him on minimum damage. You have killed another goblin. Hooray. Now I can remove him from the initiative count. And move his corpse somewhere floating in the abyss. I just get this wonderful image that we're in this mine and the goblins are sort of floating into the wall and clipping through. Yep. Someone enabled no clip for dead corpses. <laughs> Some this... Gary's mod stuff going on here. <laughs> this is not useful in any way for uh, for saving resources on your computer, <laughs> but it's funny nonetheless. Uh, the cleric is now up. Rivia looks pretty darn frustrated. Picks up her warhammer and swings it at the goblin in front of her once again. Okay. Uh, that will sadly miss. It appears to have clipped his uh, his shirt in some way. These do Not appear to be this hammer. Yeah. And they do appear to be somewhat decently armored. <laughs> Goblin number two. Um, he will attempt to hit the cleric with his hand axe again, missing miserably. Ah, low level D and D. <laughs> Where no one can hit and everything else is made up. <laughs> and the hit points don't matter. Yeah, pretty much. Beat me to that joke. That's also like epic level. Everything's made up, the hit points don't matter, and the spells are completely and totally broken. It's 
So, the rogue can now attempt to shiv the goblin. Finally. Come on. I, I brandish my short sword. I'm going to give him this time. I give him this time. He'll taste my drunken blood. Wait, no. The other way. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get it right one of these times. That will hit him. Excellent. Right, now I have to do the proper roll, though. That will be more than enough to kill him. You have put a dagger or a short sword in his kidney. Congratulations, you have killed another one. How does, how does, ki- how does goblin kidney taste, I wonder? Uh, actually, really bad. Oh. Yeah. That is something that is kind of brought up in the module, is that basically any food ever prepared by a goblin is likely to give you food poisoning. Which includes their internal organs. Good to know. Yep. Wait, you mean they they prepare themselves to eat? Sometimes. Uh, interesting. Yeah, the remaining goblin will attempt to use his hand axe on the cleric. Just barely hitting for three points of damage. Oh, jeez. And the wizard. Ah, well, I guess I'll take another shot. Gavar uh, spends a move action loading his crossbow and then attempts to fire it at the uh, the nearby goblin. Okay. That will hit. Don't roll a one. Light crossbow is what? D8? Uh, it's D6, I think. I was about to say, in light of my recent uh, comedic failure, I'm going to uh, opt not to answer. You have killed him. The crossbow punctures straight into his head. There are now four Boom, goblin... headshot! Yep, basically. There are now four goblin corpses in the room. Wait, I thought they uh, floated off into the abyss. No, they're they're still in the room. That's... They, they have so, rephased so, into the so room. Turn off, turn off the clip for them. Okay. Yep. Loot the bodies. All right. Uh, let's see. There are four of them. So at this point, uh, amongst the bodies, you will have found something that I need to look up because I forget how that value works. All right. You will have found 16 copper pieces and nine gold pieces. Um, if someone wants to keep a running party pool, they can do that, or I can do it as well. Um, let me see. I should be able to do it. Would be fine? Uh, 16 copper pieces, and 9 gold pieces. No silver? No silver. Even though we have fucking silver mine? Any useful items or weapons? or? Uh, each of them, there are the four daggers. Uh, each of them had a single dagger uh, that they I had thrown. I asked about that. Since we're recording this, should I actually rephrase the language? No, nah, it doesn't matter. I, okay. I'm putting a mature content warning on on this, so... Lovely. If they ignore it, they ignore it. If not, if they don't. So, the way that everyone fucking ignores it. Yep, basically. Uh, each it's of them... 18 or older. Yeah. Each of them have a hand axe. Uh, all weapons, armors, and other stuff are sized for small characters because goblins are small. Um, they have There are wooden shields on each of them. And studded leather on each of them. I'll take a wooden shield. Okay. Let me add that to my character. Uh, that would give me, what, like one AC? Yes. That would get me up to 16. That's good. Sweet. Uh, in this room, there is uh, not much else. There's a door down here to the to the south. Um, and you're free to poke around the room however you want. If I was to walk a little a little circle around the room, would I would my stone sense activate or cup sense? Uh, your stone sense will activate. Stone sense activate. Alright, so give me a search roll. I think it's search. 
If it's not, it's search now. <laughs> 17. All right, that will reveal to you a hidden door. Where is this hidden door, I wonder? Hold on, there's a door floating out of the way. It's more of this no clip shit again. Yeah. <laughs> the door is right there in the the southeastern corner. Ah. Are we supposed to be able to see? No, you are not. That there is um there is a vision blocking tool in map tools. However, it does not work well, and it is pretty memory intensive. Because whoever developed this is terrible. Yeah, it could use a lot of reoptimization. And we're major project. Hmm. I was talking about something just asking major project. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, major four. project. Gerg, major project. Major project. Yeah. All right. Well, the the hidden door you have found will give way to a short, uh, but somewhat tall tunnel, uh, leading to another dead end. However, your stone senses are tingling yet again. Ooh, I like my stone senses tingling. Really. It's like the one time I got a vibrator. Nice. <laughs> door! That, that will discover the door. The, the door is where uh, the rendering stopped. There's now a door in the correct oh, place. Do I have any more stone sense tinglings? Uh, no, you do not. The okay. door... Uh, let's see, is the door stuck? Are we moving, or...? Uh, I'm assuming that during non-combat stuff, you guys are moving to the relevant place. I'm kind of lost right now, because the entire map is visible. Yeah, no, you, you're not supposed to be able to see all of it, but you guys are right about here at the moment. Oh, okay. Alright. The... The door will open very uneventfully. Uh, this room that someone has the wrong map scale for uh, has two small round tables, seven chairs, and many straw bed mats. The western and southern walls hold the only two doors leading from this room. Four goblins turn and look at you with smiles on their evil face. Each is swinging a loaded crossbear to bear on you. Now, let me... Move the correct tokens into this room. Oh god, more goblins. Well, this is what you're contracted to kill. Are we... But, but the brochure said there will be a few goblins. Yeah. This is a terrible adventure. <laughs> Worst first adventure ever. <laughs> ah, again, I have the wrong hit point values. But that's okay. That's an easy to fix thing. How many? Of the, how much of this adventure recording is going to be just elevator music? It's like, please stand by while we fix shit. Yeah, yeah. Please wait while I fix the things that I should have fixed last night. Everyone can move up to where they want to be before I roll the initiative. I'll be behind Mr. Cleric. Mrs. Cleric. Miss Cleric. Ms. Cleric? Somewhere. Why am I in front? I don't know. Cleric should always be in front. <coughs> Put the wizard in front. <laughs> Fine. The wizard will go in front. <laughs> Put the wizard in front. <laughs> this seems like a terrible idea, guys. <laughs> I mean, he's Kuruvar the Brazen, after all. Yeah. The rule of cool comes before the rule of optimization. Fair enough. As uh, long as I live long enough to get to uh, my turn in this initiative. Don't worry. I'm a life and death cleric. Alright, clear initiative. And one goblin is up. He will take a shot at you with his crossbow. He will be very effective with his crossbow. That is the wrong damage value. You are a small creature. That is the right damage value. Two points of damage. Ouch. How much right. health do you have as a wizard? Four. Oh. 
that's half your health. Okay. Yep. If you were playing uh, D20 Modern, it would be massive damage threshold right now, but it's not. So there are also numerous other problems associated with that. But the I play that once and then I had my weapons jam like all the time. Yep. It's it's kind of kind of misdesigned. But the cleric is up. Yep. I'm going to check my spells to see if I actually can do anything this round, because I'm getting tired of this Warhammer. Let's see. One spell. Let's look, see here. First level skill. <laughs> uh, it lists every spell that you could possibly have prayed for, I see. Yeah. I forgot about uh, that. How long does Divine Favor last? One minute. Yeah, Is I that believe... like... I ten believe rounds? It's, yes, it is ten rounds. You would not be remiss to choose to heal me. <laughs> Inflict minor wounds. Inflict minor wounds is a <laughs> terrible spell. He has one hit point left. Drop oh, him into unconsciousness. <laughs> I'll inflict minor wounds. Yeah. I had been more referring to C Curavar, but okay. Alright, uh, it will be a touch attack. Versus an AC that... is 10. What do I roll for a touch attack? Um, uh, base attack bonus and strength bonus. Yep, yep. So 1d20 plus 1 again. Yep. You have hit the touch AC. You have effectively killed the goblin. Hooray! I like to think of it as this goblin just explodes into all these terrible oozing wounds. Yeah, that's pretty much how the spell works. Even though it's minor. Nah. And we're level one. Yeah, it's more paper cuts than anything, but the dwarven rogue is up. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Actually, it's my big problem. No, no, it won't be a problem. Okay. Ah, employing the dreaded no-clip, rogue. <laughs> Let's see. Um, if you hit space when you are moving, like moving a token, it will put a red dot there, and then start your movement again from that point, like this goblin is doing. Oh, okay, gotcha. Which is a really useful feature. Because I need to double-check, but I think I only get, like, 20 speed as a dwarf. Yep. So, however, you can never be over encumbered. You can never yep. lose well, speed. I can be, but it's really fucking hard. Yeah, it requires wearing mountain full plate. That's about the only thing I can think of that does it. All right. Slushy, 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 slushy. Oi, oi, oi. I should remove you from the image. No. Yeah, you will have not hit. Sadly. However, it's that skull. That goblin's turn. To try and... Yeah! Oh, wait. No. To try and poke you. Stop poking me. Stop poking me. Yep. Ah, yet again, you have given the wrong damage value for the size. Ignore that this says X. He will try and poke you with a sword. For two points of damage. Um, actually, he does not hit me if that's a 15 to AC. That is. Alright, I have 16. Yay! Oh. Hooray! I hear my house phone ringing, and I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> Here you are, is up. Alright. Well, Truvar. Is there about to be a template dropped? There's about to be a template dropped if I can figure out how this tool works without scribbling all over everything. Uh, if you hit <laughs> Control Z, it'll un undo whatever you scribble. So, Kurvar moves to, suppose this place should work, and he drops a uh, color spray into the room. Uh, from that spot, you will have to cast defensively or take the AO. Let me make sure that I did the thing that I meant to do. <laughs> Let me make sure I have combat casting and concentration. Have, have concentration, but no combat casting. All right. Let's uh let's go ahead and cast <coughs> defensively. 
All right, that is a D20, or that is a concentration roll, I believe. And it is a 10 plus spell level to do. And that, that is a failed concentration roll. He will get his attack. Oh, no, he won't. He has his crossbow still. Never mind. He wouldn't get a, an attack either way. way. The, the spell would just fizzle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, never mind. Ignore that. He doesn't have an attack of opportunity. You don't have to cast defensively. He has not had his second turn yet. So you're color spraying him? Them? Well, them. Yeah. So in that case, uh, 15 foot cone uh, would be all of them. Yep. All right. What save is this? That's against fortitude. I'm sorry, will. That's oh. will. <laughs> Hold on. Let me roll their will save then. I don't think any of them get it. No, they've all blown it. That would have been a 15. Okay. So, let me uh, go ahead and roll the effects there. They are unconscious, blinded, and stunned for six rounds. For six rounds. Then they'll be blinded and stunned for uh, two rounds, and then they will only be stunned for one round. So, so uh, you have... Yeah, you have six rounds to coup de gras all of them. Ooh, I'll just gotta have some fun with this one. <laughs> you're unconscious, you're unconscious. The cleric. Oh boy. Now I should look up how the coup de gras works. <laughs> yeah, how does that work? <laughs> I think it's basically ridiculous bonuses. I get to pop for a target. Special attack. No, you're not a special attack. What are you, then, coup de gras? <coughs> Actions in combat? I think it's a combat action. Yeah. Full round action. Deliver coup de gras. Okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, it still doesn't have it. God. Really? Hold on. I'm just going to look this up in my actual DMG instead of in this SRD. Because I'm fairly certain Coup de Gras is in that. I was hey, there was like specific things I just could not put into the yeah, SRD. It's, uh, it's, it's here in the, uh, in the SRD. You automatically hit and score a critical hit. And if the defender survives the damage, they must make a fortitude save, 10 plus damage dealt, or die. And a rogue also gets their extra sneak attack damage against a helpless opponent while delivering the coup de gras. Woo! Okay. So, uh, what is the critical on that weapon? Times three? Ah, roll 3d8 plus three against whichever one you want to coup de gras. The one I'm facing right now. Alright. Still the wrong instance of map tools. Okay. He cannot survive that damage. He is dead. Bogolf. Pripyat gets extremely excited when she's coup de grain goblins. It's something about being a death cleric. Goblin, I shall give you a soldier's death. Sword, sword to the back of the neck. Uh, that was a shitty crit. Actually, no, that's times two, so... 14, technically. Yeah, he's dead. And Kuryuvar. This is just the first round of them being unconscious. You have five more rounds to dispose of this one goblin. <laughs> I hope you can Kuruvar do it. Kuryuvar walks up, and uh, he will fire his crossbow <laughs> into the uh, the goblin. You have killed the four goblins. Congratulations. I now recompose the bodies. <laughs> Alright. Um, on, on each of the bodies, there is a short sword, a light crossbow, 12 crossbow bolts, four sm or a small wooden shield, studded leather, and... Between the bodies, there are seven copper pieces and ten gold pieces. 
Swarm. Two, wait, gold. can I use the light crossbow as a rogue? Yes, I believe so. I think that's one of the ones that's called. No, on. I get the hand crossbow, which oh, is Oh, yeah. Expensive. Yeah. Well, by the end of the adventure, you guys should have more than enough money to buy whatever you want. Well, not whatever we want. <laughs> well, almost anything you want. But. Well, uh, uh Greg, rogues have access to, ha- uh, to crossbows. To hand crossbows? Not. Unless they're simple. Yep, crossbows are simple. Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. I'll. Re- I'll... Repeaters and hand crossbows are exotic. Okay. But hand crossbows, I. I get a weird exception to though, and I can use that. Anyways, um, are just light crossbows, right? Yep. So, guys, I can use this thing for a range attack instead of, you know, always be up or close. Can I have that? Well, there's four of them, aren't there? Yep. Oh, there's four of them. Oh, sorry. Okay, one of them. Yeah, there's a, only sixteen bolts though, so you can go ahead. And no, there's the forty-eight bolts. total bolts. There's twelve oh, bolts per body. In that case, I'm going to grab a crossbow and some bolts, too. Okay. All right, want to, split, want to split the bolts, then? Yeah. So, 24 each? Yep. What is the range on these crossbows? That's a good question. Uh, 60 or 80 feet. It's more than enough that you will never run into a range penalty in the dungeon. I at least know that much. Yep, 80 feet. Although you have to be within 30 feet to sneak attack, Greg. Yes, I'm aware of that one. Okay. Well, at this point, you have two ways you can possibly go. You can go to, through the door to the east or the door to the south. It's my Keep stone in mind, sense there was a me. door that we just completely ignored several, well, a room back. Uh, your stone senses are not tingling. I always so, wondered, like, how does it actually, like, work, like, if you were to really reenact this, when it suddenly Stone Sense kicks in, it's just like, wait, something's not right here. It's more that you just subtly, p- or you, you unconsciously pick up on stone working that's wrong for the style. So, like, a hidden door that might be almost completely flush, you might pick up on that there's some sort of, like, discoloration between the two types of stone. Gotcha. Yep. Oh, you do have... This is not of the fan art style of stone work. What is this? Basically. Um, and I will... I will start dropping down little things in rooms you have cleared. I will find a token for that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's for simplicity's sake. So, you guys have a choice now. Uh, which way do you want to go? Hmm. Well, let's have a look at the rest of the map. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Out goes by you. Alright, according to that, out. we should go down. <laughs> That's just completely random. Okay. Let me... I'm all for going down. Let me move the, the no clipping. Oh, south, I guess I should say. <laughs> No now would actually corpses. be a good time for me to uh, start cooking, by the way, because Jess will be home in ten minutes. Well, this is about an hour, so we can wrap up this episode here, and then take our break, and when everyone's back, we can continue. Cool. All right. Wait, an hour? Yeah. Break? Right. Yeah, Sam's got to cook. So I'm going to stop the episode here, so we'll see you guys next time.